This tutorial is a project of nonprofitaccountingbasics.org, a free resource developed by the Greater Washington Society of CPAs Educational Foundation. Our goal is to encourage accuracy and accountability to help smaller nonprofits successfully manage and sustain their organizations. Hi, I'm Ben Takis, founding attorney of Tax Exempt Solutions, and today we're going to talk about drafting the Form 1023 narrative. The narrative is part of the application for 501c3 status in which you tell the story of your organization and go into depth describing the organization's mission and activities. It's also the part of the application that's easiest to mess up and say the wrong thing, which can ruin your chances of qualifying for 501c3 status. So today I'll be laying out a method for drafting the narrative the right way. The Form 1023 application is an in-depth and rigorous look into an organization's structure and activities to determine whether it qualifies for 501c3 status. Note that there is now another way to apply for 501c3 status if you're a small organization. This is called the Form 1023EZ. The 1023EZ doesn't require a narrative, doesn't require supporting documents, and is a much easier form. But if you don't qualify to use the Form 1023EZ, or decide not to use it for strategic purposes, this webinar is for you. Also, the method I'm gonna describe is also applicable to the Form 1024, the application for non-501c3 organizations. First thing to keep in mind is that the narrative and the application as a whole should be consistent. One of the easiest ways to make the IRS suspicious and have them asking more questions is to have things in your narrative that are not consistent with the rest of the application. So the application as a whole should be cohesive. Also, you should be thorough. Failure to disclose significant activities in the Form 1023 and the narrative can cast doubt on the validity of your IRS determination letter. It can be very tempting to want to leave out activities that you think might make it more complicated or could jeopardize your chances of qualifying, but that's not a good idea the IRS at a later date could retroactively revoke your 501c3 status. So all of your activities should be described. Also, if you look at the Form 1023 instructions, you'll notice a whole bunch of requirements that the IRS lays out. You need to describe what is the activity, who conducts the activity, when is the activity conducted. In my experience, refer to this as a guide, but the IRS is not very strict about requiring that every single item is reflected in exhaustive detail. As long as you're fully and thoroughly describing your activities, the IRS is likely to accept that. And at worst, they may have a few follow-up questions. A very important principle that I want you to keep in mind is that the Form 1023 narrative is not a grant application and should not look like one. So the purpose of a grant application is to show the grantor how your organization is unique and more worthy of grant funds than competing organizations. So for a grant, you might describe how serious the problem is that your organization is approaching, how you're approaching the problem in a completely new and innovative way, and other things that set you apart. The purpose of the Form 1023 narrative is 180 degrees opposite. The IRS is not looking to see how you're different they don't care very much about how important your mission is. What the IRS is looking for is to see how your organization is similar to the other 501c3 organizations they've approved in the past. So you don't want to look unique necessarily in the 1023 narrative. You want to look as much as possible like organizations the IRS has already approved. With that principle in mind, I have five steps to drafting the narrative, and we're going to go through all of these in detail with respect to a specific example. Under step one, you'll need to identify what type of 501c3 organization you intend to be. Step two, research the hot button issues associated with your type of 501c3 organization. These are the controversial activities and issues that may lead in the IRS to reject an organization of your type. Step three, Assess how well your organization fits the relevant type of 501c3 organization and whether any hot button issues are raised. That's the preparation phase. Steps four and five, you'll start drafting the application and the narrative. 
Step four, draft a general introduction that states the organization's purpose and strongly evokes the traditional criteria for exemption. Step five, describe the organization's activities, leading with the activities most consistent with exemption and circumventing any hot button issues as much as possible. So let's look at a specific example to see how the steps work. In this example, we have an arts organization that I'm calling the Hypothetical Arts Organization, Inc. This organization has three main activities. They're gonna hold monthly workshops. They're gonna hold a nationwide art competition for young artists with a $10,000 prize that can be used as a scholarship. And the competition finalists will get to exhibit their work at a gallery owned by the organization. And the organization will help sell the works and receive a commission. So proceeding with step one, what type of 501c3 organization is this? HAO's purpose would be promotion of the arts. This is a type of educational organization. And as you can see, there are some IRS rulings approving of organizations that do similar types of things. It's important to be aware of any precedent or guidance that establishes the justification for your 501c3 exemption. Step two, research the hot button issues associated with your type of 501c3 organization. So this is gonna depend on what type of organization you are. In the case of HAO, it's an arts organization, and the IRS it mainly, is mainly suspicious of arts organizations that focus on the art of its founders, directors, officers, or members, so these kind of conflict of interest issues. Also, organizations that focus on art that has mainstream commercial appeal. A 501c3 arts organization should focus on art that has artistic merit and that needs the public support of a 501c3. Lastly, the IRS is suspicious when organizations engage in gallery sales activities. The gallery sales activities are really the most difficult issue here. The IRS has a long history of rejecting arts organizations that do this, but there is case law that provides a roadmap for when gallery sales can be acceptable. So you're gonna wanna find any relevant case law that will provide a framework for navigating the hot button issues. There's a case here called Gold, Goldsboro Art League v. Commissioner in which the court approved gallery sales uh, under certain circumstances. And there are some factors here that we're gonna want to rely on when drafting the narrative. Step three, assess how well your organization fits the relevant type of 501c3 organization and whether any hot button issues are raised. So here, HEO's workshops and art competitions are a very good fit for exemption. Those are clearly educational activities, and the IRS would generally have no problem approving that. It's clear that HAO is taking steps to manage conflicts of interest and is making education a priority over marketability of the art. The organization is clearly focused on the art of young artists rather than its founders and directors. However, the gallery sales activities are likely to raise some concerns, but we're gonna look at the Goldsboro case and emphasize those factors that will put it within that case as much as possible. Steps one through three were all about research and preparation. Step four will begin the drafting process. So you're gonna to wanna to start with a general introduction that states the organization's purpose and strongly evokes the traditional criteria for exemption. So in this case, we wanna focus largely on education and advancing the abilities of aspiring young artists. That's most consistent with the traditional notion of an arts organization. So here, my first paragraph says, Hypothetical Arts Organization, Inc., a nonprofit, non-stock corporation established under the laws of the state of Maryland, is an arts organization formed and operated for the exclusive purpose of advancing the education and abilities of aspiring visual artists through workshops, art competitions, and by providing opportunities for select groups of young artists to exhibit and sell their work. So we provided a very clear framework that makes it easy for the IRS to know what type of organization this is and how to analyze the application. Step five, we'll draft descriptions of the other activities. We're gonna lead with the activities most consistent with exemption and circumventing the hot button issues as much as possible. The second paragraph will be devoted to the educational workshops. This is HAO's strongest criteria for exemption, and we wanna emphasize things like uh, the 
fact that the workshop is open to students for free. The third paragraph will describe HAO's competitions, will include details like the selection criteria the judges will use. This will show that the organization is focusing on artistic merit rather than marketability. And we're going to show that the founders and directors will not personally benefit from the competitions. The fourth paragraph will need to deal with the gallery sales activities. And this is the trickiest part of the narrative. We're going to try to connect the activity to the organization's exempt purpose and use Goldsboro as a guide to circumvent IRS concerns. So the Goldsboro factors that are helpful here, the gallery sales further HAO's educational purpose by providing an incentive for the artists to enter the competition. Works are selected by independent judges based on artistic merit. The founders and directors will not sell their own works in the gallery. And these gallery sales are really a small portion of HAO's activities and funding. So those are steps one through five. And let's just look at what the final product might look like. Starting with paragraph one, again, here's my intro. Feel free to pause the webinar if you want to read these paragraphs more slowly or take notes. Paragraph two talks about the workshops. We are emphasizing the fact that the workshops are open to the public for free. We have some details about the topics the workshops will cover, how people can sign up, and we're going to note that the workshops are conducted at a gallery owned by HAO. The third paragraph talks about the arts competition. So we're noting that the arts competition is for young artists under the age of 21. We're going to mention the independent committee of judges and talk about the criteria that they're using, originality, technique, overall composition, and design. These are aesthetic criteria. We'll note that the prize money is used for tuition at an accredited art school, again, furthering the organization's education purpose. And we're going to show that conflicts of interest are being managed. The key to drafting these kind of narratives is to show the IRS that you're aware of what the touchy issues are and you've taken steps to address them. In the final paragraph, we'll deal with the gallery sales. Again, we're going to mention that the gallery sales are really based on artistic merit. Their organization is not trying to focus on art that's going to result in the most sales. This is really a means of furthering the education of the artists and providing an incentive to enter the competition. HAO will do some representation and help sell the works for 5% commission, but we're going to remind the IRS that this is really a small part of the organization's overall activities and funding, and that conflicts of interest, again, have been managed and addressed. So those are the steps to drafting the Form 1023 narrative. You want to know what type of organization you are, know what the hot button issues are, and show the IRS that you've taken steps to manage and deal with those issues in a way that's consistent with a 501c3 organization. Thank you and good luck.